Sisson from Rolling Stone Economics bringing you macro question number one from the 2013 AP Economics test. Maybe you couldn't get any satisfaction because you got a little bit worried about some of the concepts on the first question, but watch how you will receive utility by your answer. Okay? The first question, what does that say, Steve? The first question asks us to do what? Assume that the United States economy is operating at full employment. Using a correct, correctly labeled graph of long-run aggregate supply, short-run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand show each of the following. Current price level, labeled PL, and current output level, labeled Y1. We have to thank Jordan Andrews from the University of Delaware for providing us with this review lesson. Jordan, you nailed it. Thank you. And all the AP Economics class thanks you. Here's the long-run aggregate supply curve. They said to label this at Y1, so make sure you call that Y1. That's probably going to be worth a point. This is probably going to be worth a point. Draw the short run aggregate supply curve, it looks like this. And draw the aggregate demand curve, and make sure that the equilibrium occurs at P level one, Jordan already knew it. P level one, way to go, Jordan. Uh, and that's how, that's the first question. Probably when the readers get this question, it's probably going to be worth maybe three or four points out of 12. So I think you all got off to a very good start. Question B. Assume that personal savings in the United States increases. Using a correctly labeled graph of the loanable funds market, show the impact of the increase in personal savings on the real interest rate. Okay, so your loanable funds market is going to be labeled such. It's the uh, real interest rate on the vertical. We're going to have the quantity of loanable funds uh, on the uh, horizontal. It's basically supply and demand. Supply of loanable funds here, demand for loanable funds here. So you get an increase in the supply of loanable funds. And, uh, why is that? What, what happened here? The savings increase. So why would that be an increase in supply of funds? Because the amount of savings that you're going to have uh, saved in the bank or the like is basically the quantity that can be loaned out as you know subtracted from the, uh, from the um, required uh, the reserve requirement. So you're going to have you're going to see a drop in the real interest rate right here. Now, uh, for question C, based on the real interest rate change identified in Part B, will interest-sensitive expenditures increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? Interest-sensitive basically means that they are going to react to any change for uh, increased real interest rates. They're going to decrease the amount of uh, spending that they have. This is for investment. Or uh, when real interest rate decreases, they're going to increase spe uh, investment spending by a large amount. So Especially the sensitive means why? Similar to price elastic. Price elastic. Price elastic. So they're basically their elasticity is relative to the interest rate. So what's um, going to happen to the rate of economic growth, and can you show it on the on the uh, long run model to your left? Yes, actually, right here we're going to see basically the um, the because it's interest sensitive. That means that investment spending is going to increase. So we're going to be seeing a uh, increase in the aggregate demand right here. Yes. Hey, Label. Aggregate demand too. Um, and then also the second part of the question was what will happen to the rate of economic growth? As rate of economic growth is relative to investment, because in, as you know investment increases, that's going to increase the rate of return on the next year and the next year after that. Uh, rate of growth is going to increase by a considerable amount. And you can show that on the graph right here, because now we have a new equilibrium, and of course there's more jobs and there's the economic growth. Great job. All right. The next question talks about the eurozone. Can you read that? Uh, assume that the real interest rate of the Eurozone increases relative to the real interest rate of the United States. Draw a correctly labeled graph of the foreign exchange market for the Euro and show the impact of the change in the real interest rate in the Eurozone on each of the following. Demand for the Euro and value of the Euro relative to the United States dollar. We're going to thank Matt Lane of Penn State University for drawing the flexible exchange rates. Now he drew it in pounds, but now we're going to do it in Euro. Make sure you can label the graph. This is the Euro market, so it would be how many, the price level would be how many dollars per one Euro. And of course, this is the quantity of euros, all right? So the equilibrium exchange rate will be uh, right here at, at, at this level. And what's going to happen? There's going to be an increase in demand for the euro. Why is that? Well, the real interest rate in the euro has increased. And what does that mean? It means investors can find a better return on higher real interest rates and lower interest rates. For example, suppose you had an investment opportunity here domestically where you could make 6% if you left your money in Citizens Bank, but you could only make 2% if you left it in TT Bank. Where would your funds go to? Clearly the higher investment opportunity, the 6%. So people need it. So what's going to happen here is going to be an increase in demand for euros. 
What does that do? That increases the price of the euro, which means it's now going to take more dollars to buy one euro, meaning the euro, the euro has appreciated. The euro has appreciated, and the value of, and we said, it was an increase in demand. Finally, the last question talks about, uh, assume that the United States' current account balance is zero. Based on the change in the value of the euro identified in Part D, will the United States' current account balance now be in surplus, deficit, or remain at zero? Well, we want to talk about what the current account is. We want to thank Charlie Leisure of the University of Georgia and Tanner Kiley of Penn State University for giving us the current account. And the current account means flow of goods and services between two countries. The capital account means the flow of the currencies between two countries. Okay? Because there's going to be a more expensive uh, euro now, appreciated, people in the United States are going to say goods are more good, expensive. So that means U.S. imports will decrease okay? as U.S. exports will increase. So what's going to happen? Exports will increase, imports will decrease, and there will be a surplus in the balance of trade as, as the current account increases. Thank you very much. For the next time, pause the video. We'll see you with question number two tomorrow.